G'day everyone, it's been a while. Uh, the rumours of my lethal irradiation are highly exaggerated. Work has just been uh, rather busy and I haven't been feeling particularly creative or energetic at the, the end of the long days. Today though, I, uh, I built something I've been meaning to build for a long time. This is the, the Curious C Beeper. It's something uh, Charles Wenzel came up with many years ago. It's on his web website, techlib.com. Uh, I'll put the link and, and etc. in the the bar down the bottom later. Uh, this is actually Daniel Garcia's version of um, of Charles Wenzel's circuit. It's not terribly different. It's it's much the same, but the uh, the resistor values are a little bit more tractable for for component sources that you might have. And um, I built it in a fairly small enclosure. It's a Luxor mint tin that I got from uh, Vegas many years ago. Anyway, the, the really cool thing about it is that unlike most uh, test equipment, you can use your body as the other connector. So when you, you, know, you obviously need two contacts to test something, but with this you only need one. So let's start here with a one pico capacitor. And uh, I'm going to just hold the tin to, to complete the circuit. It starts off with a very high pitch squeal and the frequency decreases with increasing capacitance. So let's go up a decade. This is 10 pico. Happens to be also the frequency approximately where the piezo I used is resonant. So, which is a, a fortuitous coincidence. Most uh, things when you're using it for other applications that I'll show you in a minute are around the, the 10 to 50 pico farad region. So uh, that just happens to be the, the best sound as well. Anyway, this is 100 picos. And this is one nano. This is 10 nano. Oops. <laughs> it's more of a ticking. This is 100 nano. And this is one microfarad. That's probably the practical limit. I mean, you know, it's what? 0.1 hurt or something, <laughs> well, 0.2, maybe 0.3 hurt. But uh, it is a very cool little tool for other things. Uh, capacitors is, is one fairly obvious application, but the uh, honestly the most useful thing I've found is for looking at uh, bifailure or n failure transformers for working out which wire is which. In this particular case I've used two different colour wires just to make it more obvious, but most of the time using magnet wire and you've used the same colour wire, you've twisted it together and you've got no idea which one's which. But with this thing, you can uh, you can just use your fingers to work out which pairs which. So, obviously here with the red one, if I touch it, it stops. But the other foot, it just changes the frequency. So, but just by touching one wire that you want to know who the mate is and you start touching the other ends you can work out even just pinching it if you haven't if you use magnet wire and you haven't stripped them back you can just pinch them and the one that changes frequency the most is the corresponding pair in the transformer that's particularly useful uh, other things it can do it can kind of give you an idea of how something's constructed internally I've got an antenna here I can tell that the uh, the shield part of the SMA stops pretty soon in the antenna and the broken wire test is actually one of the applications that Charles mentions on his website you can uh, you can tell I've broken the wire here um, in a very unsatisfactory way but it's quite hard with this thin piece of wire to do otherwise you can see when I touch beyond the break the change in frequency is much less dramatic so, uh, all in all, pretty damn useful tool. I think it'll become uh, quite indispensable, as he says on his website. Uh, I really think you should make one. I don't know how I've lived with it so without it for so long. It's uh, it's a very simple little circuit, three transistors. Um, doesn't require an off power switch. This particular one pulls a few tens of microamperes. Uh, power supply. I'll show you the construction. Power supply is just two lithium cells um, that I've put in holders to make them a little easier to change, although I don't expect to have to change them very often. The trimmer capacitor here biases the, um, the circuit until it's just about to oscillate with the load capacitance. And yeah, piezo, a little lead, the lead pulls most of the current, I think it pulls about 1.5 milliamps when it's actually sounding and 10, 
12 microamperes when it's not sounding. So the battery should last a particularly long time. Uh, construction is obviously up to you. you. You can make it in a very small space, but if you used SMDs, you can make it in an extremely small space. You could probably fit it in a tube, you know, not much bigger than this. The idea of using a metal container is quite good because it is a little bit sensitive to RF and uh, strong electric fields, which is also a feature. It can tell you, for example, if there's a live mains wire, you touch it to that and it'll, uh, it'll buzz. It's, um, yeah, very handy little tool. Anyway, uh, techlib.com and uh, if you just Google for the Curious CBP, you'll find it, but I'll put the links down below. Um, yeah, in the in the near future, I hope to be doing some, some more really simple kind of circuits like this. I've got some ideas, maybe for Advent this year. I'm, no, I'm not really a Christian or anything, but uh, any excuse is a good excuse to have uh, electronic Advent calendars, for want of a better term. I thought I'd uh, I might probably sit down, take a, some components to work, and... Uh, spend a few minutes in my lunch hour coming up with something each day that I'll... I uh, don't know if I'll have time to write a video on all of them um, but I'll probably stick them up on my website or at the very least I'll sketch them out and uh, post the sketch on... Oh, who knows? <laughs> I might do a YouTube video on them. I'll... Uh, the rules that I've set for myself is they have to be largely discrete built out of uh, transistors, resistors, capacitors, that kind of thing. I uh, might use the odd IC here and there and they've got to be something practical, um, some kind of circuit that actually has a, well, a theoretical use, if nothing else, no blinkies and other things, although well, maybe I'll do a blinky for the 24th because it's kind of appropriate for Christmas, but I think um, more, you know, useful tools like, like this, but uh, we'll see what else we can come up with. There's some creative people at work that I work with and I'm sure we'll bounce ideas off each other and perhaps we'll... Uh, We'll do some pretty cool circuits, and it's doing 24 of them in a row is uh, going to be going to be challenging. But we'll see how we go. Alrighty, catch you later.